Welcome back to the Zarlingo Foundation Unlocking Learning Disabilities podcast. Today we are joined by Lisa Costello. She is a clinical and school psychologist and the training director at the Zarlingo Foundation Learning Evaluation Center. So today we are going to talk about ADHD and everything that comes with that. So thank you for joining us today. Um, So let's jump right in. Let's talk about the different types of ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. We'll jump right in. And um, we were talking a lot before we started and it was just such a rich conversation. So I feel like we're going to have a lot to talk about yes. <laughs> today. But when we think about ADHD, it stands for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And broadly speaking, it's a challenge. It's a variety of challenges with self-regulation. So regulating attention and emotions and behavior. So that management system of the brain. And when you ask about the three different types, there's and primarily inattentive type, a primarily hyperactive impulsive type, and then a combined type of ADHD. Okay. Okay. So I think one of the common uh, misconceptions about ADHD is that it is a kid or a person who is just hyperactive all the time and can never sit still and is always on the go. But there's also a component to ADHD where you hyper-focus in on something. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Hyper-focus can be seen across all the different types of ADHD. And it's something that we look about, look at and think about, and it can be confusing yeah. for people, right? Because it's like, you know, I don't have this one thing I'm really interested in and dive deep in, or I see my child really interested in diving deep and paying attention for hours doing this thing they love versus when we have to do these kind of more mundane daily activities that are less exciting, less interesting, it's much harder to do that. And it looks willful then at times, but that is not the case. It's that, um, you know, that regulation of attention is is challenging and you see pockets of times when um, you might be able to hyper focus but generally regulating attention is is more difficult yeah so we went through the list so far but the first type that we can talk about is that inattentive type so that's primarily you see challenges with focusing becoming easily distracted uh, struggling to stay organized and that most of the symptoms group there and you're If you're just having kind of the inattentive presentation, we're not seeing enough symptoms to say hyperactivity and impulsivity are clinically significant um, to be the combined types. Okay. Okay. So that would be more just the ADD. Is that what, is that what they used used to call call it? it. Yeah. Okay. So when people hear ADD, that's, and that's kind of the typical thing that people think of, right? With ADD is that you're hyperactive and you're not paying attention and you're always on the go and that sort of thing. So that's kind of that first one that you're describing here. Is that right? Now, it would be ADHD, correct? Yeah, so okay. um, ADD, attention deficit disorder, mm-hmm. oftentimes people think of as synonymous with yeah. ADHD inattentive yes. type or primarily, um, you know, inattentive. Okay. Right now, the diagnostic manual that we use uh, to classify conditions has it broken down this way sure. as ADHD inattentive type. type. Okay. And then what's the second one? So there's then the hyperactive, hyperactive and impulsive type, which we talked about, yeah. is that acts like you're driven by a motor, yeah. um, lots of energy, um, but maybe some more difficulties putting on the brakes with that energy to fit different circumstances and situations, um, potentially some troubles with stopping and thinking before acting, that type of thing. Sure. Okay. And then the third one? That's a combination. Of the so two. when you have enough symptoms in each of those categories, we say it's combined. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So let's talk about, um, first, let's talk about the strengths of somebody with ADHD. So we obviously know we'll get to the challenges, but what are some strengths that um, people with this kind of wiring of their brain would experience or would have? And I know it's not the same for everybody, but just kind of a general idea. No, I think that's a really important point to start with the strengths because that's often how we should be interacting with people in general is really trying to look for and recognize their strengths and that every single individual has this profile of strengths and challenges. Um, So when we think about it kind of categorically, we could probably, you know, name a hundred (laughs) things, but, you know, based on some of the things that we already talked about is um, having 
energy for the things that we're really interested about, diving into projects and um, things very passionately um, and being driven to, to pursue those interests, I think is something that can come up often. Um, are there things for you that come up? Well, I'm just wondering, and I don't know if this is or not, so you could tell me, but yeah. is creativity a strength of people with ADHD or is that just kind of a something that we see in creative people may also have ADHD. I mean, definitely many of the people that I've worked with that have ADHD or, you know, lived with in life that have ADHD have a lot of interesting and creative thoughts that kind of feed into those areas that we sure. were talking about is when interest is sparked and something um, gets you going it's like the possibilities are endless, endless type yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. so, so let's talk about the challenges. I mean, we can obviously see that in school, um, there's, again, the possibilities are endless on the number of challenges that a kid with ADHD might have, right? Sitting still, paying attention, having to do something that they would determine is boring or not interested enough to, to hold some kind of um, time, you know, to say, okay, I have to work on this for half an hour, even though I'm so bored out of my mind. So what what challenges do you see being kind of the, the few that we would look for for kids who we might say, this kid may have a, a struggle with ADHD, and so what would those be? Yeah, so I think we've touched on them a little bit, but I think I like the way you're, you know, framing it contextually because that's often, you know, a, a thing that's a problem in one place may not be a problem in another place. And when you're talking about the school setting, there's often rules that kids have to follow, things that kids have to get done um, that help maybe see difficulties that might be present. Whereas, you know, if they're not in that context, they might be seen as strengths. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Just like we were talking about before. Yeah. So um, an example, you know, that comes up often is trouble with um, organizing mm -hmm. tasks. Um, so that this idea of knowing how to start, how to persist, and how to finish um, tasks that you have to do and how to do it in the time constraints that you have. Those are things that come up often. Um, when we talked about kind of that, higher energy level, uh, being able to, you know, follow the rules of a classroom, maybe getting out of your seat more or moving your body more than is expected in that situation can be something that's talked about. And um, whereas like on a sports team, those things could be like really beneficial and helpful, but in a classroom setting, they're less beneficial and less helpful because they might be you know, impacting the way that you're able to attend or other people are able to attend. Sure, sure. Um, so at home, yeah. one of these challenges may be getting chores done, cleaning our room, loading a dishwasher, doing the things that we just have no interest in. So boring. It's, yeah. Yes, they're boring. <laughs> Nobody likes it. So those would be particularly hard for kids with ADHD. So this isn't a kid that you can just turn to and say, just get it done. That's, that's just not going to work for them, correct? If that, I mean, the mundane, the boring, it's, it's harder to get kind of going around that kind sure. of stuff and harder for everyone, but even harder when we're thinking about um, people with ADHD. Um, and you're wondering, so, you know, that's, that's what it could look like at home is that task completion and, um, uh, you know, things piling up potentially yeah. uh, because it feels hard to get started and not quite sure potentially how to work through it, that type of thing. Okay, so you have a child with ADHD or you yourself have ADHD as a teenager or an adult. What are the treatments that people can have um, to help them kind of cope and, and be able to function in a classroom or at home doing the chores and that sort of thing? So I think the first one, let's get it out of the way, because I think it's the one that comes to mind the most, is medication. So tell me how that works. Yeah, so um, the American Academy of Pediatrics reviewed um, ADHD treatments and interventions. So there's a 2019 paper that really talks about what evidence we have for different types of interventions for kids with ADHD and medication comes out as a primary sure. intervention as well as behavioral therapies, so parent behavior therapies and um, classroom management um, components. So you're asking about kind of that top one medication and if you don't mind, can I rewind just yeah, please. a step is um, I think what's really important when making decisions about treatment is understanding that you have a good diagnosis. Um, because when we talked about the three different kind of categories of ADHD, 
we didn't, you know, yet get to the fact that ADHD commonly co-occurs with other conditions or other conditions can look like ADHD. Yeah. So it's really important to get a good understanding, just like you were saying around that strengths um, and challenges profile. And what does this mean diagnostically? What things are on the table and um, knowing kind of is it ADHD alone? Is it ADHD with anxiety? Is it ADHD with a specific learning disability? Knowing that will really help you make a clear treatment program. Sure, sure. So if I'm dyslexic and have ADHD or I'm autistic and I have ADHD, we might treat this slightly different because we're also going to need to treat the other things. So we're going to need to treat ADHD and get some kind of strategies around that. And then also what are we doing for our dyslexia? That kind of getting an overall picture so that we're not just putting a bandaid on something and then there's still something else going on. Yeah. That kind of big picture and, um, it's like big picture and specific yes. <laughs> recommendation as yeah. far as what do we do um, and how do we prioritize what we do next. So if a parent thinks their kid has ADHD, of course you have to talk to your pediatrician. But then mm -hmm. you also recommend saying, should we also get some diagnostic testing? Just We can come in just alone thinking we have ADHD and, and try to test for that. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Or is, is there some other better way to go about that? Yeah, those are um, so there's different ways to get an ADHD diagnosis. The best place to start is that conversation with your pediatrician because that's someone you've had a longstanding relationship with. Sure. They know, know you, they know your child, um, and they can do some initial measures with you, which um, you can look at functioning at home and at school. And that's really important for a diagnosis is that you have to see these um, kind of clusters of behaviors and clusters of challenges across different settings. If you don't see them across different settings, um, then it likely, you know, isn't ADHD sure. or, you know, we're missing something yeah. as yeah. far as how we're getting information. So um, you can, I think, starting with a pediatrician and sometimes it's a clear cut situation where they do a good, um, you know, history, they take information, you have school records that say, you know, we're on target in all these other areas and this is the only area that we're seeing concern. And then they give rating scales, you know, potentially talk to school personnel and get information back about how a child's doing. So diagnosis can happen sure. through that process. Okay. Um, other times there's questions about, oh, I wondering, I'm wondering about this. I'm wondering about that. Um, there's, you know, these ADHD symptoms, but also reading feels tricky or these ADHD symptoms. And I'm seeing a lot of anxiety. Um, so that, you know, that's where that more comprehensive that would be a good time. evaluation okay. um, works. I, I do think a comprehensive evaluation at, you know, for every kid at some point. Yeah. Um, and at that initial point, it is really helpful because then you can get that baseline information about, you know, where they're at before you start intervention and treatment. And then you can kind of measure responsiveness that way. Okay. Okay. So, so we've got medication and mm -hmm. that's something that we can look at. And that's what that would be with a pediatrician or a psychiatrist and they Absolutely. could prescribe that medication. And then what are the other two treatments that we, that you were talking about? Yeah. So the other treatments, um, Behavioral parent training is kind of the umbrella that the main treatment falls under from that behavioral standpoint. And that's really focusing on how do you support positive behaviors through the things that we do as adults with kids and how do we um, address challenges that come up. Okay. Um, so kind of in the broadest sense, that's the type of training. And it, you get to learn very specific skills and very um, specific structures to set up at home to help kids be more successful. And um, when we think about the behavioral parent training, it's the same set of skills that we also think about in the school setting yeah. is how adults can set kids up for success, ways they can interact with them to promote them to be successful sure. and any accommodations and supports that need to be in place um, to help remove barriers that are impacting learning. Sure. So you'd have the adults in the kid's life, the parents and the teachers working to make sure that they're set up as best as they can be to have successful school and home experience. 
Is that, that was a beautiful story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's very kind of specific things that you do within that, but those sure. are the umbrellas of how are we encouraging more of what we want to see and how are we addressing you know, things when they come up that, sure. you know, we don't, we want to see less of those things. Sure. So positive reinforcement, positive attitudes, great. Hey, you did this really, really well. I mean, I'm simplifying this so simple, but you know, just really concentrating on the, on the strengths and the positive so that we can then say, okay, now here's some challenges that we need to work on, but not start with, you did this wrong. You did this wrong. This wasn't good. You talked in class too. not never going first to the negative, but really trying to start with the positive. Yeah. I mean, how would we feel as a yeah, adult? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. But I think you kind of hit, you, you hit the nail on the head around that foundation of positive relationships and environments that are set up structurally to support success are so key. And if those structures aren't in place, it's very hard to do the other things. So yes, those foundational pieces are key and um, they're not sufficient on their own, but they're important to really attend to and to balance out um, ahead you know as you're thinking about kind of sure. what interventions to put in place in sure. addition to um, those foundational skills okay but those are things that are coached and supported yeah in the the behavioral therapies okay Okay, perfect. Well, wonderful. Well, I want to thank you for this conversation yeah. today, and we will pick up soon with more about ADHD. But for today, thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. kind of an overall look at everything. Yeah, it's great talking to you.